Hi guys, welcome back to Lifestyle Love. So this video is how to budget and save for your wedding day. And this has been a huge subscriber request which has been going for so long and I'm excited that we are here today at Bo and Luca, which is a stunning bridal shop you mm -hmm. call it. Yeah. And not only am I going to be sharing with you my, I guess, financial advice and tips and tricks as to how to budget and save for your big day, I've actually bought in a guru, Danielle from White Plus White. Now she is a bridal wedding planner, mm -hmm. sorry I should say, <laughs> and she has been running her own business White Plus White for over seven years. She's based in Sydney and in Brisbane and she's very, very kindly sharing her sort of insider bride savvy saving tips and tricks as to how to get, I guess, how to invest in your wedding, what's worth investing for, where, it's, where you can cut corners, you know, how to, I guess, get the most out of your wedding budget. But we are both so excited to be able to share this information with you today. So to start this video, I'm going to share with you my financial money saving wedding tips and tricks so that you get the most out of your budget. And then I'm going to hand the reins over to Danielle, who's going to share with you her insider tips and tricks. So my first recommendation is get open a savings account dedicated to your wedding. So you need to nickname this account Wedding Money and both you and your partner can view this account and access this account. The moment it's open, you start contributing and you both contribute. Even if only one partner can only afford to contribute a dollar per week and the other person is contributing thousands of dollars per week, it doesn't matter. You are now a team and you're both contributing to this account to pay for your special day. Also by both being able to access and view the account, it means that you have a clear line of communication and you can both see exactly what you're paying for, how things are adding up, the cost of things, and it just minimizes any sort of tension or stress. Second tip is actually quite funny because we both had the same, I guess, point or recommendation. And that is to communicate or voice what you value on your big day. So what are things that brides are really important? Because you recommend just having three key things that are really important to you and also letting your partner mm -hmm. you know, verbalize you know, what is important. So what are the things that you often hear from brides and their partners mm -hmm. as being the most you know, number one non-negotiable mm -hmm. special aspect of their wedding? Yeah, so we, um, we hear a lot that the food and, um, the food and wine is the number one priority for a lot of our couples. Uh, the photography, because you know, your memories are captured forever. Oh, right, yeah. Um, and also for the bride, um, it's very fitting that we're here at Bo and Luca today. The bridal dress, of course, yeah, yeah. is a must have. And you recommend having this upfront um, conversation as quickly as possible in planning the wedding so that things don't kind of get out of hand and you understand, mm -hmm. you know, so everybody's happy and to sort of keep the peace. Yeah, just absolutely. I mean, one of the, the first questions we ask is, is that what's your three, you know, top wedding uh, priorities? And um, we suggest you sort of establish this very early on the piece before, you know, mum and dad and your work colleagues all get involved um, and perhaps maybe pop in those priorities on your fridge. My third tip is to think outside the square and get creative. One of the most amazing weddings I went to was actually in a paddock and it really captured the personality and the earthy nature of the couple getting married. It was breathtaking and it cost them absolutely nothing. And it was so unique, so no one had actually ever been to a wedding in a paddock. And it was so much fun. And Danielle was just telling me, uh, some girls just want to get married in their family home. Yeah, absolutely. There's something garden, special. Like, yeah. Stunning. Yeah, there's something special, I think, about going back home um, where you grew up. Um, where your memories were as a child. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, if you're lucky enough to have um, parents that maybe have a tennis court or a bit of land, mm. we can pop a gorgeous marquee on there. And um, it, it's, as I said, it, it's just magical. Yeah. And really personal and really intimate as well. Of course. Mm. Yeah. Fourth tip is when it comes to paying for particular things and if the budget's getting tight and you're getting really stressed, is to be open and honest about it. And when people say to you, you know, what would you like as a wedding gift? You could perhaps say it would mean a lot to me, it would be really helpful if you can maybe contribute to the photographer for the day. Because that means you know, you're giving that person the gift of the, you know, the images that are going to last a lifetime. And instead of just asking for some upfront cash through say a wishing well or a honeymoon fund, you're giving them something you know, much more personal and you can actually name and articulate what you're giving that person as a gift. And that can help keep your budget in check. Now you've mentioned you know, the wishing well is probably the most popular mm -hmm. thing to do because yeah. we already, you know, live with, most mm -hmm. of us live with our partners before we get married. 
is that is becoming is increasing popular like what are your thoughts around that yeah, so I think definitely people, you know, couples are moving in together before they're married, they have too many toasters anyway, so the wishing well is kind of the most logical and practical way, um, you know, to sort of, you know, uh, give a gift to your guests. Um, I love the idea, as you said, of, of putting it towards something in the wedding. Um, also, we've seen, you know, uh, couples uh, giving maybe bottles of wine yep. and leaving a beautiful message. So when that couple opens that bottle of wine, they know who it's from, um, they can text them an image um, of them enjoying the wine, of course. Yeah. And I just think that that's really um, beautiful um, and significant. And the guest feels like they've, you know, they've really created a special moment for the couple. So you don't necessarily need to shell out thousands of dollars for amazing locations. Think about simple places that mean a lot to you and your partner and see how you can incorporate some of those ideas into your wedding planning. Our fifth and final tip, is actually to invest in a bridal planner. Now most people will sort of panic and think, oh, no, 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 this is a, what's Kenna saying and thinking, but okay, let's be honest, planning a wedding takes a lot of time, it's incredibly stressful, you're also the politics of keeping everyone happy and everyone's opinions, um, it's hard and also, I mean, I know when I planned my wedding, I had no idea if when I got a quote, whether, was that quote reasonable, was I being ripped off? Is that the best place to go to? What's the reputation? It became overwhelming. And um, I actually did get a, a wedding planner. Um, I ended up handing over the reins because yeah. it was just too much. And also, it was a huge distraction for my life and, and the stress was causing, you know, I was taking it out on other people. <laughs> so, and the great thing is, yes, it does cost a, a fee, but you actually, I believe, and, and you can tell me as well, because you, can, you know exactly where to save money, you know exactly what's worth investing in, you know exactly the right people to go to, and also you access trade discounts, mm -hmm. which, you know, the cost of your, of your service mm -hmm. can, you know, be multiplied in the savings, which mm -hmm. is fantastic, and what's more important is you're a fantastic, like, sounding board, because mm -hmm. when you're married, everyone's in your ear, and it's Absolutely. a little bit overwhelming, yeah. and um, it's nice to have that person holding your hand, mm -hmm that's not only there during the lead up to the wedding, but they're on the yeah, night. <laughs> yeah, we're there to the end. Yeah. So if you're getting married, it's definitely worth checking out You know, a, a wedding planner. And of course, I recommend heading over to the White Plus White website and also having a squeeze at your beautiful mm -hmm. Instagram account because there's lots of great ideas and you can see the amazing work that Danielle and her team have done. And as I said, they're based in Sydney and Brisbane. Right now, I. I've already heard Danielle's tips and I absolutely love them and they're brilliant. So I'm gonna, I want you to share with the viewers um, what your insider bright savvy saving mm -hmm. tips are. Okay, well I think number one, and I think this is the most, uh, you know, the most important tip I can give you, is less is more when it comes to your guest list. So by- Keep it intimate. Keep it intimate. Um, you not only save money, because uh, your food and beverage is gonna be one of your biggest um, costs, mm -hmm. But you get to enjoy the night in a more intimate setting. And you can spoil your guests with beautiful food and wine. And you can get around to see everyone on the night. Exactly. And my second tip is styling. So, everyone wants a dressed wedding. <laughs> they do, they do. Um, and there's some just some, some little tips that we um, have learned along the way that can really create that wow factor for your wedding. So, uh, hanging installations are you know, they're very trending at the moment, um, but focusing on that, you know, that one installation and loving it up with flowers, foliage and lighting um, makes, a, yeah, it makes an amazing impact um, to your look and feel. And you mentioned, um, you, know, it's, you know, if you've got a budget when it comes to the floral arrangements, mm -hmm. focusing more on the greenery, the foliage, rather than, you know, mm -hmm. a mass of excessive colour can actually look incredibly breathtaking and beautiful. And that can also be a form of, as you said, keeping that budget for the flowers down. Yeah, absolutely. Like, love up your you know, installation, your centerpieces, your bouquets with greenery. Mm -hmm. It's cost effective, it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, what's not to like yeah. about beautiful greenery? Yeah. I want to keep on hearing okay, these tips. Okay, more. The king, the brides to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I think we spoke about um, wedding favours. So, do you have them? Do you not have them? I'm sort of on the fence with this. I think if you're going to do it, you do it well. Mm -hmm. We don't do it at all. Okay. And there's things that you could do for your guests um, to make sure them like special. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, to make them feel special and, and to thank them for coming. Um, for example, you know, at the end of the night, often flowers are left on the table. So we're spending thousands of dollars on these gorgeous flowers. Why not give them to your guests? Um, we have uh, things called roughing stations, where we, uh, which is so much fun. We sit down and you know, at the end of the night wrap up the flowers and give them out to each sort of couple or um, family member. Which is so nice because they get to take a part of the night back into of their course. own home and it sits there, you know, for the week or so and you know reminds them of such a special day or special night. Mm -hmm. It's that's it's such a, a thoughtful, kind thing to do to give back to your kids. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. And another idea is perhaps, you know, gifting those flowers to like your local uh, retirement village mm -hmm. or, or nursing home. Yeah. yeah, I think that's so lovely because um, they absolutely love them and they're not And they them. really appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love that idea as well. Another tip I'd say is to hire your styling items. So when I mean styling items, I mean candles um, and all the gorgeous things you're going to put on your, your tables mm -hmm. because you'll find by the time you, know, so you buy off Etsy um, in bulk, in bulk yeah. um, Someone on the day has to transport them to yeah. the venue. And then um, put them on all the tables. That's right. And then someone has to return at the end of the night to take them home, yeah. you have to clean them, yeah. you have to store them, yeah. and chances are they're going to sit in your garage for the next five Collecting years. dust. The alternative is to rent them because mm -hmm. then someone will get them to you, someone can distribute them and mm -hmm. style them for you, and Absolutely. they'll come and take them away and mm -hmm. you'll never need to deal with them again. That's right. <laughs> and now your final tip. Mm -hmm which I think is probably the most important tip mm -hmm. and the best bit of advice mm -hmm. um, I've heard, and that is have a buffer mm -hmm. in your budget. So there is some hidden costs or some costs that might pop up that when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. And one of the big ones we see is uh, delivery uh, fees for your furniture. So for example, if you can't get into your menu until the day off, which is most common, uh, delivery hire fees can almost double that from like a Friday to a Saturday mm. um, and that can really you know really affect the bottom line yeah um, and um, especially if you've got to get the stuff out because the locate the venue has a particular uh, you know event booked mm. the next day I mean the stress and pressure of that as mm. well yeah is, is a lot yeah. yeah so how much would you recommend as a buffer are we talking 10% or 20% or, or a particular financial number what's your you know advisable guide when it comes to having a buffer for your wedding budget? Mm. Well, I think uh, a buffer, I mean, that would take care of sort of extra delivery costs, bits and pieces, like you don't think about like, you know, got these gorgeous photos, well, you need tea lights and candles to put in them. Mm. And that all adds up. Yeah. Um, so I would say about, you know, uh, about 5% of your budget can be your buffer um, for your uh, for your incidentals. Okay. And that's again, that's sort of the advantage of having a planner is mm. you're less likely to need that buffer because mm. you are ahead of the game. You know, you know how to keep it in check and how to, you know, what things to watch out for and you know the sort of hidden traps mm -hmm. so that you know you don't actually have to rely mm -hmm. on that buffer and if there's money left over, wow, <laughs> towards the wedding or yeah. the honeymoon maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also having some other day, I think, uh, managing this. Mm. So most couples, yeah, they're so excited for the day. The day comes and oh my god, who is actually going to clean up the yep. room? Who's yep. going to pick up these items? So um, having someone that manages that and you just don't have to worry about it. And also to someone to remind you, like if you said you want something to happen during the night, like mm -hmm. you about a girl who wants some sparklers, you mm -hmm. know, and you're so wrapped up in the night and having so much fun, mm -hmm. it's so easy to forget about some of those activities or mm -hmm. things that you want to happen on the day. To have that person who's mm -hmm. there switched on, mm -hmm. got you know the show running to perfection, mm -hmm. to go, hang on, we've got to do the sparklers, like that, that's great that you remind that. Like, the yeah, of yours about the sparkles and yeah. she could, you know didn't get forgotten about it. Actually happened. Like, yeah, so make things happen. Yeah, of course. And we're you know we're the queen of run sheets. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love run sheets. Yeah, I love good clipboard. So uh, we make sure that yeah the night runs smoothly. Behind the scenes, everything's going well, and you don't have to worry about a thing. Yeah, you're not hassled through the whole night. Um, you know by the manager saying, oh, do you want to eat now? And, and what time are we doing this? You know, it's all taken care of by us. Well, that is it for this video. I have one quick question for you, and um, I haven't warned you about this, but I, what to you, like what to you makes a special, um, beautiful wedding? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I think you know, it's all about the couple. Every single couple that comes to us, they're unique, mm -hmm. so their wedding should be unique as well. Um, and I think you know, finding what makes them a couple mm -hmm. and injecting it into the wedding is the most, um, I think, the most important thing. Um, in the wedding planning process.
That's it for this video. I want to thank Danielle very much for coming in and sharing this very sort of confidential uh, intellectual property uh, with everyone. And also to thank Bo and Luca for letting us film mm -hmm. in this incredible location. These dresses are just breathtakingly mm -hmm. beautiful. So thank you very much for coming in. As I said, I will mention Danielle's beautiful website, um, White Plus White, and the Instagram account, which was fantastic. And I will see you next week on either Lifestyle Love or My